In our world lead, 42 Syrian soldiers are dead from reported Israeli airstrikes. That's according to a Syrian opposition group. These strikes seem to be aimed at preventing weapons from being transferred to the militant group Hezbollah, which the U.S. State Department considers to be a terrorist group, sources tell CNN's Barbara Starr. While the Syrian government says these strikes open the door to retaliation, an Israeli general says that there are, quote, no winds of war. I want to bring in Hala Garani, CNN international anchor and correspondent, and Josh Rogan, who has a brand new job as a senior correspondent for Newsweek Daily Beast. Thanks for joining us, Josh. Congratulations. Uh, I want to play for you guys something that the ambassador, the Israeli ambassador to the U.S., Michael Oren, said to me uh, on Friday when I asked him about, at this point it was just reports, uh, that there had been some strikes by the Israelis against the transfer of these weapons. We have a very clear policy. Uh, if the Syrian regime tries to transfer uh, chemical weapons or what we call game-changing weaponry to terrorist organizations, particularly to Hezbollah in Lebanon, Israel will not remain passive. We're very serious about it. That's about as close to an, a, an acknowledgement as you're going to get from an, an ambassador before news like this uh, breaks. Do you expect this to escalate? You know, I don't think that at this point Israel expects it to escalate because when you look at Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's trip to China that went ahead as planned, he didn't even mention what's going on in Syria right now on his first day in China. So it seems as though they're taking some preventive measures uh, in the part of the country where they think there might be retaliatory strikes, not from Syria, but from Hezbollah in southern Lebanon, which is significant by deploying their Iron Dome system in that part of the country. So I don't think the expectation is for an immediate imminent escalation to a region-wide situation at this point. And Josh, the people like you and me and, and, and uh, Hala obviously have been parsing something that President Obama said a few weeks ago, the red line, where uh, there was a story in the New York Times over the weekend saying that it was an ad-libbed red line. But let's go back and take a listen to what the president actually said when it, when it came to chemical weapons used by the Syrian regime. We have been very clear to the Assad regime, but also to other players on the ground that a red line for us is we start seeing a whole bunch of chemical weapons moving around or being utilized. Uh, that would change my calculus. That would change my equation. So we're told now that, that the aides were surprised when he laid out that, that red line. But he laid it out anyway. Does it matter? Uh, it does matter. Words matter. And when you set red lines, people believe them. And then when you don't uphold them, people lose faith in your credibility to uphold them. Uh, we saw President Obama last week. Uh, say that, oh, Syria has crossed several lines. Uh, so now he's sort of walking back from the red lines. Uh, the overall problem is just getting worse. It doesn't really, in the end, matter uh, what the lines are. What matters is what the U.S. response will be, and that's what we're all waiting to see. And Hala, we've heard uh, from a United Nations official that there are reports, not conclusive ones, but right. reports that the rebels uh, have, may have used... That sure complicates things, doesn't it, all <laughs> of a sudden? Exactly. May After have used... we've heard from Israel and other Western countries that they believe the regime has used chemical weapons, now all of a sudden we're hearing the possibility that, wait a minute, could be the rebels. And what are you hearing about that? What's a... Well, Carla Del Ponte, the human rights investigator for the UN, made this statement on Swiss-Italian television. Today, the UN came out with a statement that was very short, saying, hang on, uh, this is not conclusive. It sounded as though the UN was sort of taken aback, surprised by this Carla Del Ponte statement. So there is some confusion at the UN. I mean, that's the impression they're giving outside observers at this stage. Right. What my administration sources tell me is that the State Department and the White House don't believe that the Syrian rebels have the capability to, to produce these weapons, nor, nor do they have them in their possession. I mean, we're talking about complicated weapons that are complicated to deliver on complicated weapon systems. And the Syrian opposition uh, simply probably doesn't have the ability to do that. Uh, the most likely scenario is that was the regime that used these weapons on at least two occasions, maybe four occasions as recently as last week. I'm told now that uh, CNN correspondent uh, Fred uh, Pletkin is, is uh, in Damascus. Can, Fred, can you hear me? Yeah, I certainly can, Jake. Sorry, we're having trouble with the line here, but I think we're good now. So what are you hearing uh, from Damascus? Uh, what, what's the latest there? Well, I mean, I can tell you that over the past couple of days, the Syrian regime is absolutely angry. First of all, of course, uh, at these airstrikes that went on. Uh, one of the things uh, that happened is um, 
we were basically sleeping uh, from Tuesday and uh, from uh, Saturday into Sunday night, and then all of a sudden the night just absolutely erupted, and it was several uh, initial explosions, and then there were secondary explosions that went on for well over an hour, and that seemed to indicate to us that some sort of major installation had been hit, probably some sort of ammunition depot, and then what happened is that the Syrian uh, state television put up a banner saying that Israeli rockets had hit a research facility, but people living in the vicinity there say that they felt the, the, the wave, the, the blast wave in their houses more than a mile away. So clearly it must have been something much bigger. And the Syrian government is absolutely angry. I mean, one of the things that we have to keep in mind about all of this is that what was hit is really the power center of the Syrian military. There's several units of the elite Republican Guard that are in those military facilities. Uh, there is that research center. There's also a big weapons depot there as well. So the Syrians are absolutely angry at this. And as we've been saying, they are threatening retaliation. At this point, it's unclear how they want to do that. But people here in Damascus are on the edge. The government is on the edge. And the military, I can tell you at this point, is licking its wounds, Jake. And Josh, this wouldn't be the first time if the Israelis conducted this and it certainly seems like they probably did, but it, it wouldn't be the first time that the Israelis had actually bombed a site in a local Arab uh, country and there really hadn't been uh, all at war as a result. Right, let's remember that Israel attacked Syria's suspected nuclear reactor in 2007. Uh, they attacked another sh armed shipment to Hezbollah in January, and then there was the attacks on Thursday and then probably Saturday. So that's at least four we can name that haven't gotten a big response. Let's remember, this is not an Israeli attack on Assad. It's an Israeli attack on Iran and Hezbollah. Uh, that's the, the battle that's going on on the streets of Damascus uh, as increased uh, Hezbollah and Iranian activity forces the Israelis to respond. But this reinforces the narrative of the Assad regime. Uh, from the beginning, the Assad regime has said these are outside forces working against the Syrian people. And this reported Israeli strike that strategically is on the side of the rebels, ironically now, you have the very unlikely bedfellows here, reinforces that narrative, just as the, the killing and the atrocities continue. All right, Hala, Josh, and of course, Fred in Damascus, thanks so much for joining us.